So, I was playing Sifu on the normal difficulty, and Grandma over here reminded me what the pavement tastes like. That got me thinking. Over the past few years, have games gotten too hard? Now, listen, I like being punched in the mouth as much as the next guy, but a man can only take so much. Extremely difficult games used to be the norm back in ye old days of gaming, but once Mom, Dad, and Little Susie got interested in Tetris and Wii Sports, games began to become more casual. However, recently I've noticed more and more games, like Dark Souls, that have come out that seem to get aroused from busting my kneecaps. This isn't to say that easy games don't exist now, quite the opposite. On the opposite end of the spectrum, you've got the Mario games which are notoriously pretty easy. Everyone is different, and sometimes it doesn't matter how good of a game designer you are. All of your players are going to have a different skill level, meaning some games are either going to be too challenging or too easy for your players. So how do we handle this? Well, thanks for asking, viewer. The most obvious way is using difficulty options. Pretty simple, right? You got game journalist mode, baby's first game mode, normie mode, try hard mode, and compensating for something mode. These have been around for ages. Mega Man 2 on the NES allows you to choose between normal mode and difficult mode. The difficult mode being the original difficulty in the Japanese version of the game, Rockman 2, and the normal mode being an easier difficulty where Mega Man does more damage and some enemies have more health. As a result, it makes defeating enemies take much longer. So while yes, this mode does up the challenge, it does so in a pretty cheap way by making you have to waste more of your time. A better way to do this is seen in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. In this game's hardest difficulty, Critical Mode, as you'd expect, enemies deal more damage. But the thing is, you deal more damage too. You also get access to more skills early on. So instead of being a slog fest where enemies take forever to kill, the game feels just as fast, if not faster than the standard difficulty. But difficulty options do have a problem. Have you ever gotten to a difficulty menu and just sat there, staring at it like you're reading the menu at a restaurant you know is several zeros out of your price range, not knowing which of the various different options you should select? I mean, how are you supposed to know which difficulty level to pick if you're a first time player? When I play a game for the first time, I'm usually going to gravitate towards the normal option. The way I look at things, normal means this is the base level gameplay experience we want everyone to have. But sometimes, like in the case of Cuphead, the normal mode is ridiculous. So. How do we keep inexperienced players from getting trounced? Well, you can always go the unlockable difficulty modes route. In the original Super Mario Bros., by beating the game, you unlock the game's new quest, which many fans refer to as Hard Mode. Hard Mode has small differences to increase the challenge, like changing all of the Goomba enemies to the more tricky Buzzy Beetles. This is fine and dandy, but the problem with locking difficulty behind beating the game is experienced players who want more of a challenge from the get-go are kinda screwed. All of this is a huge headache, so just give the player an easy way to unlock the harder difficulty if you do want to make it a secret. Like in Kirby's Dream Land, where you can access the more challenging extra game by pressing up, A, and select on the title screen. The first Zelda has a pretty cheeky little way of accessing its hard mode, called the second quest, which you do by naming your character Zelda. Difficulty modes are a simple solution that works a lot of the time, but they aren't without their flaws. What if you do pretty well on the hard mode of a game, but just one specific level is giving you trouble. Well, an easy fix for this is just to let you switch the difficulty on the fly, which a lot of games already do, like Persona 5. However, another way to do this is with difficulty sliders. Sometimes you need to be the Goldilocks and get the difficulty just right. Celeste has its assist mode, which lets you tweak certain features like giving you more air dashes and slowing down the speed of the game to make platforming easier. The kings of difficulty sliders are rhythm games. These games let you change everything from how fast the notes move across the screen to making the game play like you're drunk. But by doing this, you're also asking your players to do your job for you. Do you really trust Johnny Xbox to know the optimal difficulty for his skill level? So, another alternative is dynamic difficulty. Instead of the player choosing how difficult a game is, what if the game decided the difficulty for you? Dynamic difficulty is when games adjust the level of difficulty depending on how well you're doing. In Pokemon Yellow, you have a rival who functions as a recurring boss who you fight over the course of the game. Well, interestingly, how well you perform in the first two battles with your rival determines how difficult the best Pokemon on his team is later. If you lose 
lose the first two battles, your rival's starter Pokemon will become a water type, making it easy for your starter Pokemon, Pikachu, to defeat it since electric type attacks are super effective against water types. If you win only one out of the first two battles, your rival's starter will become a fire type, which has an even matchup against your starter. However, if you're a pro gamer and win both of the first two battles, your rival's starter will become an electric type itself, meaning your Pikachu's electric type attacks won't be very effective. Another game that did this well was Crash Bandicoot 2 on the PS1. If the game notices you've been getting curb stomped by a particular section, then the game will show mercy on you and give you some items like an Aku Aku mask to allow you to take an extra hit before you die. But what I think is a more interesting solution to the problem of difficulty is allowing multiple paths of varying difficulty to play through a game. In the stealth game Dishonored, you can play the game by taking down foes lethally or non-lethally. Playing the game non-lethally is more difficult as you can't just fight your way out of bad situations. Non-lethal sleep darts are more expensive than the regular deadly crossbow bolts, and taking down some targets requires you to go the extra mile to find a less bloody solution. In the skateboarding game Ali Ali World, many levels have gnarly routes. Gnarly routes are more difficult pathways you can take through each level, which requires better timing and a mastery of the game's mechanics. It's a great way to allow new players to play the game normally, but also give advanced players an in-game way to up the difficulty instead of going to a menu and having to change the entire experience. If we take another look at Mega Man 2, we can find that this game also makes use of multiple routes for difficulty via its stage select screen. You can play any of the eight Robot Master stages in any order you want. Once you beat a stage, you steal the weapon used by that stage's boss, and those weapons can make the other stages easier, like how you can use Flashman's Time Stopper to freeze the insta-kill beams in Quick Man's stage, turning an otherwise stressful level into a cakewalk, and you can use the Item 2 Jet you get from Air Man's stage to fly right over the tricky platforming segment in Heat Man's level, and you can use the weapon each Robot Master is weak to to make the boss fights easier. But maybe you're too lazy to implement a more difficult mode or maybe you want to reward high levels of play without drastically impacting the base game experience. Well, you can always use challenges. Things like Steam achievements are a very low effort way to encourage players to play the game in a more challenging way. Then you've also got ranks. Many of Platinum Games' titles like Bayonetta and Transformers Devastation give you a higher rank for mastering combat. The Sonic games do something similar with their grading system. By completing levels faster, collecting more rings, and achieving a higher score in the Sonic Adventure games on GameCube, you can get a higher grade, which can get you emblems to unlock extras and goodies. Ranks in games are often just there for bragging rights, but if you want to encourage more players to try going for better scores, adding in some bonuses is always a nice incentive. Like the Metroid games, which put Samus in a more enticing outfit at the end of the game if you beat the game faster. That's a lot of work to get your rocks off, but hey, I'm not judging. But what if you're really lazy? Well, you can always just let your players make difficulty options for you. The Pokemon games are notoriously baby easy, and this led to a surge of self-imposed challenges. Players do challenge runs, basically playthroughs of a game with rules put in place by the players themselves to make the game infinitely more challenging. The most famous challenge run in Pokemon is the Nuzlocke. In a Nuzlocke, there are two main rules. You could only capture the first Pokemon you see in any given area, and if your Pokemon faints, it is dead, meaning you can never use it again and you must release it into the wild. Nuzlocke's add an absurd amount of strategy and tension to the otherwise very simple gameplay of Pokemon. One of the oldest challenge runs that I can remember hearing about are Mega Man Buster Only Runs. In a game series that's all about having tons of different weapons you can steal from your enemies, say screw that and use your lowly pea shooter. Then of course you've got the Arkham Asylum patients like the girl that beat Dark Souls 3 with the poopy Dance Dance Revolution pad or the guy who played Dark Souls with a controller made out of pizza. I included this self-imposed challenge run segment as a bit of a joke, but there definitely is a certain art that comes with designing a game like Minecraft or Persona that allows the player to do a large amount of challenge runs. So now that we've gone through a ton of different ways game developers have handled difficulty, to answer the question, are games too hard or too easy? Eh, I think games are honestly pretty fine.